All right, welcome to another show. I'm recording this on 916 at midnight. Just got finished watching the Falcon launch down there in Florida, putting up some more satellites. And on that one, they were putting up the commercial satellites. So none of them's going to help me <laughs> in my area quite yet. But there's going to be another launch not too long that's going to be in the uh, remedy of getting the uh, public actually to connect to the internet and put more up. I'm still waiting to get some in my area a little bit more so I can actually get away from these trees that they have me pointing to. But until then, I will just record and upload but we have gotten the new internet network at the lake feeding 11 spots up and running i will be going up there tomorrow which was when you see this it was yesterday because you are seeing this video on sunday and I went up there on Saturday. And then I got to go up there tomorrow, which is Monday, to switch over another client. I got three people that are on temporary setups. And I got a hold of two of them. So Saturday, I'll go take care of one. And then I will go back up Monday and switch over the other one and bring the temporary equipment that they are set on now back here so I can set up some clients that's waiting for internet. I have gotten a email, a few emails asking me why didn't I do the setup this way or that way. So I just want to go through a little bit of about the setup itself and why I did it the way that I did. One question they, uh, that I was asked is why didn't I use a POE switch and feed all the CPEs from the main box and not plug in the CPEs at each box as I did. One reason POE switch will get a lot hotter and we have a lot hot weather down here during the summer. So I use only a, just a switch, non-manageable switch, and it uses very little bit of power. So it will create very little bit of heat. And another reason, if I put a PO switch in there, from UISP and if it goes out well that means everybody's out because nobody has power to their CPEs if this switch that I have in there now I do believe is a TP link well I can just ride down to Walmart and go get any kind of switch that will handle enough ports for all of them and swap it out and go with it because there's no programming no nothing it's all unmanaged. All I got to do is switch out the switch or put a router even. So either way will work. But I can go to Walmart or Best Buy and just buy a 16 port switch. You can't buy a ubiquity um, PoE switch locally. So there's it costs a lot more, at least three times as much. And I don't need to see the switch in the UISP software. I just need a switch that will take the CPE land side and feed all the CPEs. There's no reason to put a switch in there that is going to generate all that power and that heat. Uh, I don't need to see it in the UISP. <clears throat> and someone says, what if somebody unplugs the POE on their box. Well, they lose internet. They're going to reach out to me. I, I will tell them to go out there and be sure the breaker is on the GFI hadn't tripped and be sure it's plugged in. And, and, uh, 
to get their internet back up because I can actually remotely log into the CPEs. Well, the APs, the lo uh, Loco uh, M2s remotely from here. One of them has been turned on and for whatever reason, because I turned them all off when I left, which I know I didn't leave it on because it showed up today. And it said it was on for two hours. Well, it's been over 24 hours since I've been there. So they turned it on for whatever reason, which is the GFI. Maybe they plugged something else into the other plug of the GFI and they turned a 20 amp breaker on and it automatically turned on the AP for that particular site. And if the, if a POE goes out, well, it only affects that site. That's it. Everybody else just, just keeps chunking along and has internet. That's one of the main reasons why I did not use a POE switch that feeds all of them. Because if that PO switch goes out, everybody's out. I wanted each one pretty much independently isolated, controlled, really. If one POE goes out, then only that particular site. And I got plenty of POEs, you know, they, almost like a dime a dozen almost. But the POE switch goes out, everybody's out. But if I, just a regular switch, non-manageable, non-US uh, uh, ubiquity, I can just go to Best Buy and go to Walmart and pick up a switch and, and run up, drive back up there and plug it in and plug all the uh, CPEs in and it's done. It's nice and simple, not uh, overthought of, you know, complexity. It just plain and works. So that is the reason, reasons why I did not use a POE switch. The heat, isolating the power issues, if I have any, because if we have an electrical storm and it takes out the uh, POE switch, like I said, everybody's out. But if it takes out one POE, only need to go up there and replace one POE in a box. That is the reason why. Yes, I could put PO switch, but it's too vulnerable that way in that area because we have a lot, a lot of electrical storms and it gets real hot there. And each lot has its own AP. So if somebody in lot five pulls out and leaves and they unplug their RV they and they turn all the breakers off, it's not going to affect anybody else because it's on a total isolated power supply. It's only feeding their own AP Wi-Fi spot. The only way somebody can turn something off is they turn something off that's not theirs. If lot nine walks over there and turns off lot 10 or number 11, they shouldn't be messing with it in the first place. So when lot nine pulls out and they turn off one, two, three, three breakers off, it's not going to affect anybody. It's just going to turn the breakers off in their box. It's going to turn off the Wi-Fi, and that's it. So it's it's. Uh, not going to affect anybody else. The worst they can do is unplug it. If kids go around and, and mess with it, whatever, and unplug it, well, they're just going to lose internet. And the first thing they're going to do is pretty much, uh, most likely, will text me or email me or call me. And I say, has anybody unplugged or turned the breaker off or has the GFI breaker tripped for some reason? Especially if we have a real heavy rainstorm, them GFI will actually trip and even if i had a poe switch that's plugged into a gfi as well so it would be protected from the weather and grounded and everything else so either way don't matter where it's plugged in um, it's going to be protected each of the ap which is the uh nano uh, M2s, they have a, um, on their side is set up as a router, like say AP for lot one has 192.168.101.1. 1. 
Lot 2 would be 192.168.102.1. Lot 12, 192.168.112. It'd be 1 in 100, but it'd be whatever lot they are. That's what I put on there. Lot 12 would be 112. 17, 117. 3, 103. Now, on the WAN side of that uh, CPE is in bridge mode. The, the CPE is in bridge mode, so it just goes directly straight through. And the CPEs, when the, the APs will get a IP from the router. Now, each AP has its own static IP. So it will stay on that IP for traffic shaping, suspension, and I know what it is because it'll be, say, like lot one would be 1010.1. And then uh, the next one would be 101012. Uh, don't know if that's the, f I can't remember. I think it's like 1010. Eight, I think that's the IPs I hand out on. I put set up on the router in that site is ten ten eight. So it'll be ten ten eight one o one. Same as I did on the uh, on their side. I put like ten ten eight one o one ten ten eight one o two ten ten eight one seventeen. Just uniformed on both sides, whatever their site is, it's 100 at that number. Just to make it easy to remember exactly what IPs I used on all the APs in that section. That way I'm able to actually log into each one of them easily. There are multiple ways you can actually set this up. I just chose to set it up this way to see how it actually will work out in the wild, they say. I done it on the paper. I drew it out on paper, what IPs and stuff like that, and how to set up the CPEs and the APs, which is the Loco M2s, what would be the best bridge mode or router mode, just played around and f figure out what I felt that would be the best layout for the equipment. And this is what I came up with. There's, like I said, there's multiple ways you can do it with a POE switch. I just tried to eliminate as much equipment as I could instead of having a CPE for every site out there i figured i'd do it this way and do it a test and see if it actually works and if it does i can do more locations this way i got another part out there that has got five rvs and i need to do another setup just like this i need to put a box put a router it's going to be an eight port so that will give me Two ports left over because it'd be five for the RVs, one for the CPE to feed the switch. So that would leave me two left, one for uh, login, you know, plug into the laptop and directly access everything. And one other one if I needed for whatever else. Uh, that equipment has been ordered. I'm waiting for it to get here. And then I can go dig the trench and run all them wires, which I love this one because it's all one straight line. It's like the box is here and all the RVs are lined up straight along. And it's about, I think, uh, maybe 200 feet, the furthest one. And the last two, I do believe, are actually on the same pole. It's not like one, you know, five different poles. I think it's four. And the very last one actually has the power supply for two RVs because they got like one RV here and one parked this way. And so in the corner between the two, 
they put one pole, I do believe, with two power uh, meters on it, which I can put two boxes right there and uh, take care of that. I still have not taken the uh, AP that I had up on the office tower to see what the issue is with it. It may just got, re you know, uh, the firmware may got uh, corrupted and it's just acting up that if it's plugged in directly to its POE that came with it, that it just keeps coming on and off, on and off, on and off. It's the red light would just come on and go off, come on, go off, come on, go off. It would never boot up. But when I put the nano switch between the POE and the AP, the AP came on, booted up, all clients logged into it. This is seat their CPEs logged in and everybody was surfing the net. Made no sense. But I got it in the vehicle and I probably will um, mess with it tomorrow after I get back, which will be Saturday. This is the now it's the 16th, so I'll be there today. But you'll be seeing this on the 17th, which is Sunday. Days are going by so fast, I have to bring up the calendar to be sure I'm telling you the right days. Yeah, it's uh, 12, 17 a.m. right now on the 16th when I'm actually making this video. So I will be at the late today. But like I said, you'll be seeing this video on the 17th, uh, 10 o'clock that on uh, 10 o'clock p.m. on the 17th. So I'm going to go up there and switch out one client get them get that equipment get back here then i'm gonna get that ap out and see what the deal is i'm gonna plug it in with maybe a little 16 18 inch uh patch cord and see if it will boot up or not and it's acting like it's getting too much power because when you plug in the PoE to the switch, it takes like 1.5 watts, I do believe the spec said on the switch. And that reduces the little bit of power of going to the AP. But not a lot, only, you know, one and a half max. And that is if the switch is actually got all ports used and it's, you know, using its maximum, that's what it's going to be pulling. So that kind of shy me away from thinking that's what it is, is the power. Maybe it's just corrupted firmware. Don't know. But if it wants to just flicker on and off when I plug it directly with a 16, 18 inch patch cord, I'm going to hit the reset button, reprogram it and see what happens. Or just hit the reset button and then plug it in and see if it actually will boot up. But then the question is, can I plug it into POE? and hit the reset button, will it reset or not? Because it's turning on and off. Don't know, but I'll let you know about that. It may that the lightning or whatever struck it and it's just bad, but it still worked if it actually had the, uh, the nano switch between the AP and the POE. So the radio still worked, just not on its own. So we're going to play with that and figure that out and see um, what ails it and why is it doing that. And I'm still doing things to get ready, possibly the way it looks. It's still going forward of this trip that I need to take to do some WISP uh, deployment. I got to go do some layouts and then figure out what equipment and place an order for some equipment and start putting the equipment out. As of right now, the trip is still a go. I'm not going to say where or when it's going to be quite yet. I am going to put a video together as soon as I get 100% confirmation that I will be going. But right now, nothing has happened 
that makes me think that it will not go through of me actually going. That's going to be exciting, and you'll see and know why as soon as I reveal all about that. But right now, I'm going to go ahead and say thank you for watching. Hit the thumbs up. Please share the video and the other videos on the channel. And if you hadn't already, please hit that subscribe button. It helps out the channel to get the videos pushed out to others. And maybe they'll come in and be able to subscribe and be interested in what we have here on this channel. And if you got any questions, feel free to leave your comments in the comment section below this video. We read every one of them because we want to give as much as possible of information that we can communicate with our viewers. We just don't want to put up a video and just put it out there and just say, forget it, talk among yourselves. That's not what I want. I want to be able to communicate and answer questions as much as I can. And hopefully this show will be going back live if I can get a good, solid connection here. Rather, that's going to be them putting more satellites up and turn my dish back north. Or get another internet in here since this park that I'm actually living in has been sold. Possibly the new owners is going to be willing to let Spectrum get in here. And if they do, then I'll definitely get a connection from them. Most likely it won't be a business line. It'd probably be a residential because I'm not going to be stripping it, try to strip it out to everybody here unless for some reason that the new owner says, yeah, you can go ahead and do that if you like because it'd be wireless and I don't have to have anybody digging all in my yards. If they, if he or she will let me do that. Yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it so quick, but I would have to put the backhaul connection at lot one because it's more than three. Yeah. More than 300 feet from the road where the tap is to get it here. And that's the furthest they are willing to run the line. And most likely they wouldn't run the line this far because they don't have uh, permission or access to the property. There's a form you have to fill out. The owner of the land has to give them permission to come on land. But I did put in the address of the first spot up there. And it says it's available, which is, you know, the, the pole is here. The ditch is here. The first home is right on the other side. I mean, and when I walk down there and look and see what it would take to get the internet in there, they already got a box um, on the power pole next to the mobile home. So it may still be active, not turned on, but still in good shape that they can go to the junction box next to the uh, entrance of the uh, mobile home park and be able to just make it hot and then it will be ready to go. I don't know. I'm going to have to wait and see if they're going to let them come in here and put it all through the here, which will be, hmm, actually it'll be, hmm. But if they don't, I'll look at plan B. And if plan B don't work, I go to plan C. Whatever it takes to get this show back live weekly. I can't stand not having this studio here be able to broadcast live. It used to be able to when they were pointing me to the north. Had a little bit of trees, but it was only a dropout maybe every five or eight, maybe nine minutes for maybe 20 seconds. But now it's like every one or two minutes for like 30 seconds. And live stream, I tried to I tried to live stream to my channel in private and then went back and watched the five minute video and see if it actually dropped out or not. And it did. So I scratched that. But I keep checking it because the saddle the dish here does turn every now and then a little bit more and more and more to the north. So eventually it's going to get there. 
But until then, I'm just going to make these uh, pre-recorded, and then I'm going to upload them and just wait and see what I can do later on of getting this back up and live. But that is uh, just a few questions that I got asked. Uh, why didn't I do this? Why didn't I do that? You know, yeah, I can do it different ways. It's not no one way to do it. It's not written in stone. Um, but that's the way I felt that would be best for that particular site. It's just like if you, uh, want to run ethernet wire, um, more than 328 feet, 100 meters, I do believe is the max. What would you put on the end to be able to send it to a, uh, another 328 feet? I've been pondering that a little bit. Like if I want to feed a whole park, rather if it's a mobile home park or a uh, RV park or a small residence in the you know, area, whatever, go all underground what can i use to continue the the poe and the data without having a power supply at each hub i've been thinking about that and i'm going to probably order some equipment and test it run some 100 meter wires and put what i think will work in there and put another 328 feet wire and put a device on it and see if it actually the poe will do what i think it would do and if it does then that will be another way i can deploy underground internet instead of going wireless because some of these places the trees are growing getting bushed out and getting thick so i have to figure out a way to put relays in the parks or I'm going to have to go underground. And I want to get some equipment and test it out and be sure it's going to work before I actually put it out there. Because I don't want to dig all them trenches and put up uh, the uh, stub ups and everything else. And what else I'm going to put in the box and all that and find out that it's not going to work. But on paper, on paper, it says it will. Crunching the numbers of the watts and the voltage and the line and everything else. It says it will work. But we all know how that goes. It may look good on paper, but in the real world, maybe not so. But I think it will. Ubiquity equipment, pretty much what they say it will do. Mm, yeah, it does it. Um, which just amazes me what they got them little devices that they can actually do it's just amazing and it makes work uh putting in the equipment and setting up internet so much easier and i had to go get me some new computer glasses if you hadn't noticed uh the ones i had got all scratched up and the ear pieces here where they here they were all loose and I couldn't stand it and all it is is um, magnified glasses supposed to be reflecting the screen and stuff and I thought I was going to have to move up because in magnification because it's been quite some time since I've gotten some but I went with the exact same magnification and I can still see the screen no problem. So my eyes are not getting too bad, old as I am. And I had my receipt from when I got glasses before the last time, and it was seven years. Seven years ago is when the last time I got glasses. I couldn't believe it's been that long. And the, the lady there that had done my eye exam, I showed her, I said, this is, I, it, the receipt showed what my um, eyes um, magnification needed and everything. And then she looked at what I'm going to get. Then she says, well, it's been seven years and your sight has not really got worse much at all. It's like, you know, each time they flip the little lens in there for you say, okay, let me know when it gets, uh, 
when it's in focus, you know, them little lens magnifying glasses they put in front of your eyes, they go one at a time. Well, what I had back then, she only had to move one. If there were, if it was on number 10, they went to number 11 and everything was in focus. So it was only one lens difference from seven years ago. She said, I don't know what you're doing, what you're eating or whatever, or you just blessed that you got good eyes. So knock on wood, they say, hopefully it stays that way. But that's all I got in this video. Thank you for watching. Hit thumbs, share, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Later.